Hello, this is Red and April Off Grid. Lately, we've been helping our son Kyle work on his off the grid Hyper Adobe Earthbag home. In this video, we'll be following our progress on the electrical system, framing in the door, and working on the insulation and drywall in the ceiling. We had a few more furring strips to put on the ceiling. We'll be attaching the drywall to that. And so here I am just prepping those boards and getting them ready to attach to the metal beams. We'll be using self tapping screws to attach them. That finished, the ceiling is now ready for insulation and then drywall. But first we need to design and install the electrical system. We'll be running quite a few of the wires in the ceiling, so that needs to be done first. We started out by drawing a rough diagram of the house and then marked the location of all the outlets and the lights and everything on that. And then from that pulled a materials list. The Hyper Adobe build is a very untraditional structure, and so we had to get creative on how to install this. One interesting challenge in working with a bag, earthen bag structure like this is attaching things to the wall. And apparently this is something that we should have put some more forethought into because there's a way that you can provide accommodation to attach things through to as you're building. And we probably should have done a little bit more of that. We just didn't really think about it as we were building the walls. Electrical boxes and that sort of thing seemed a long ways in the future and we feel, figured we'd just deal with it when we got to it. But in retrospect, it would have been easier to just put a piece of 2x4 in the bag everywhere that you want an electrical socket or outlet of some kind, and then you can just attach the outlet directly to that board that's in between the bags. So Kyle did do some of that through the building, and he, he put some boards in, but unfortunately we didn't think about doing it early enough to make accommodation for all the electrical boxes, and so we're having to figure out another solution. So. We had to figure out some good way to anchor an electrical outlet box to the wall, something that's really secure and won't pull out. And, you know, there's always a way. You just have to start thinking and, uh, you know, get creative. And so this is the solution that we came up with. We just got a piece of plywood. This is a half inch thick plywood. Didn't wanted something that didn't stick out too much. Drilled holes through it big enough to pass a rebar through. And then we cut a piece of, couple pieces of rebar you know, about eight inches long and tapered one end so that they drive in well. And then what, what we did was we just put it up against the wall like this. We would pre-drill with a three eighths inch drill for a little ways in, not the full depth, and then drive in these rebar stakes. And we found that this length of rebar into the wall certainly didn't hurt the wall, but they, they feel like they're uh, attached very well and provide a really good anchor point. And we left them sticking out a little bit, and then we used some glue to attach them a little bit more, and then wrapped some wire around so that the board can't pull off of that rebar, and then kind of put some glue all around that. That's just liquid nails there. So this was our kind of really cheap, inexpensive, this is all just kind of scrap materials that we had around. Here's an electrical box that we'll be using. Now we can just screw that directly onto this wooden plate. It'll be really secure. And then once that's mounted, we will be able to come in later and use a cob mixture to kind of plaster this wall and we'll come right up to the box. We will leave you know, most of the box exposed. That's why we've got a metal box. We like the look of the metal uh, sticking out. But anyway, that's the way we'll be doing it. And so this is just an example of, of a way that you can attach something securely to a wall in a earth bag structure. Here's one of the boards that Kyle inserted. He did insert some boards. Most of them are a little up a little higher on the wall since we just didn't think about doing it until <laughs> we'd already built the walls up this high. But, um, but there are some. And so here's an example of how you could, you know, attach your electrical box just directly to that. If, if you're really thinking ahead, you could actually just attach the box to the two by four and insert it deeper uh, into the wall. And then when you ran your next course, it would pretty much cover the box up with just a little bit of the box sticking out. And so then you knew where all your electrical boxes needed to be. You could attach them to a two by four, put the box and the two by four in, and then just bag right over it. And then you could recess it to whatever depth you liked. We're attaching this outlet box to a board that's attached to the window. So another creative way of attaching a base for the outlet boxes. And the wire that runs in between the outlets will be ran in between the bags and the crack in between the bags, which allow them to easily be covered up later with cob. The ceiling is an optimal place to run wire in our situation here because it's, it's already open. It's a clear place to run the wire that you don't have to cover it up with cob later. Next, we're moving on to framing out the window and door openings. We started with a treated lumber 2x8 frame 
that Kyle stood in place and then he used cleats to attach the earth bags to it as he built the walls. I decided that probably wouldn't be strong enough by itself to hold the weight of the bags above and so we added a 2x10 to give it some extra support and on top of that we used a piece of OSB so that it would stick out the full width of the bags and we wouldn't have the bags sagging over. In retrospect, we should have built a lintel that was wider than the door opening itself that distributed the weight of the bags above onto the bags on the sides of the door. But even though the way we did it isn't ideal, we think it'll be fine in this particular case. We are doing a lot of reinforcing right now to the door frame, and there's also not a lot of weight on the door, not a lot of bag material on top of the door. Also, the roof beams don't land on top of the door. They land to the side of the door, so we don't have a lot of direct weight bearing down on top, so we think we'll be fine here. I'm working on planing some of the wide boards that we're using to reinforce this door frame, and they're a 12 inch wide board. It's all my planer can do to handle these boards, and it's quite a struggle to get them through. The blades are getting a little bit dull. We want the finished door frame to be close to the thickness of the walls. The walls are 18 inches thick and so we're using a 12 inch wide board and we'll be adding to that a 2x4 to get to about 15 inches width. We didn't have any treated 2x4s handy and so we decided to just rip a 4x4 that we had in half. These treated 4x4s are some that we had used in the footer framing for our house and so it's good to be able to reuse the material here. Now that I have the boards to the right thickness, I'm ready to go ahead and cut them to length. So I'm measuring the lintel piece here and getting ready to cut that one. Always good to measure twice here. I don't have a lot of extra material, so I want to make sure I get it right. Once I've got that measured, I use my handsaw to cut that to length. And then the next step will be to put in the rabbit fits on either side. I'll be using my handsaw to do this. Here I am setting my blade to the correct depth, and I've already marked a line at the correct offset, and so I'm just using my handsaw here to hog out the extra material. Then it's easy to just use a hammer to knock out the waste and come back in and clean it up with the chisel. With the rabbit fits cleaned out, I did a quick test fit to make sure that was going to go, and then also check the levelness of the original frame here. It's actually quite level, I'm pleased. I then pre-drilled through the lintel to make it easier to attach it to the door frame, lifted it in place, and screwed it in. As you can see, there's a lot of layers in this lintel so far, and each layer builds on the other and adds strength to the door frame. Now that that's good and square and attached, I'll go ahead and cut these side pieces. These will go up into that rabbit fit on the lintel and then go down all the way to the base plate, and so they will help bear the weight of the wall and roof. I've already planed these down to the correct thickness so that when attached, they will provide the right sized opening for the door. This will create the correct size opening for a 36 inch standard size door, and I'll be doing the framing and door seal and everything for that myself. Trying to get a good tight fit is critical here, and it's always a challenge. Usually it takes me two or three tries. Also, I want to make sure that it's good and level before I make the attachment. Once this board is secured, I will be extending this door frame by adding a piece of treated 2x4 all around so that it brings the thickness out closer to the thickness of the wall, and then we can just close in the gap between the bags and that board with 
stucco on the outside and cob on the inside. And here's a look at the finished framing from the outside. We also did the window framing as well. We did quite a bit of reinforcing here, including reinforcing the top with a treated 4x4. Kyle did most of the electrical work, and here we are just getting ready to attach the wires to the bags to clean them up and get ready for stucco. Most of the wiring was run in the ceiling, but some did have to go across the bags, and we were wondering what would be the best way to attach that. We had seen other people use these staples. It's kind of a long u-shaped nail with a special plastic clip that keeps it from damaging the wire and we decided to go ahead and try them to see how well they worked i wasn't expecting much i just didn't feel like they would grab very well but surprisingly they grabbed really well these uh, the earth in these bags is really hard and it's actually you know i'm encountering quite a bit of resistance driving in these nails and they seem to grip really good so uh, it was a better form of attachment than i anticipated well, everything is pretty much finished up inside. I just need to install this porch light and we should be ready to do some test runs here in a minute. We installed a light that points down and is shielded so that it meets the requirements for dark night sky lighting. We try to protect our dark night skies here in Arizona. We're now ready to double check some connections in the solar shed. As you can see, Kyle is completely on solar here. There is no grid connection on the property whatsoever. Kyle's already been using his solar system for over a year and a half to run his RV, and so it's nice to finally get it hooked up to his home. Everything checked out good on the connection, so we're ready to test out some lights. Here we're testing out a light that'll be over the shower. Kyle wanted most of his lights to have a dimmer function, so we're testing that out as well. Kyle is using mostly recessed LED lights for his home, and the exception to that is a ceiling fan that'll be over the living room slash bedroom area that'll provide some air movement and have its own light as well. Well, everything with the electrical checks out, and now that that is done, we're ready to continue our work on the ceiling. Next up, we'll be adding the insulation and then the drywall. Kyle installed all of the insulation himself, so we didn't get any video, but here's a few pictures of the progress. Kyle had to cut each piece to size to fit in between the metal beams, which are on four foot centers, and he also made sure to fill in all the little spaces. Next up was the installation of the drywall on the ceiling. Kyle has never done this before, and we are getting ready to leave on a short weekend camping trip. And so I came over before we left to show him how to do it, give him some brief instructions. Also brought over the drywall lift that he'll be using, but he's never done drywall and he's going to be doing it all by himself. We'll see how this goes. We bought this lift to do our house and it's come in really handy. It's a wonderful tool and it does allow you to do drywall on the ceiling by yourself, which seems like it would be almost impossible to do otherwise without this help. I'm sure people can do it, but it would be really difficult. So at least we do have the right tool for the job and hopefully Kyle can make this work. Yeah. So this will allow you to raise it up yep. and then it's self locked so it yep. doesn't come back. Make sure you're supporting it and ready yep. and don't accidentally hurt it. I'm just going through and explaining how it operates. There are some safety considerations to be aware of when you're using it. If you're not careful, you can cause it to drop and it can hurt you. While we were gone, Kyle was able to finish up the insulation and get about half of the drywall up. So it was very impressive considering it was his first time. Unfortunately, he did hurt his shoulder during the process and needed to take a few days off. So when I got back, I took over to finish up the ceiling. Here I'm using a purpose-built tool to create the right-sized hole for the recessed light. We're using 6 inch recess lights here, but I believe the actual hole size is 6 and 3 eighths, and this is so easy. It's done in just a second, and it's so much easier than doing by hand. Here April and I are bringing in the board. Whenever she's around, she gives me a hand, because they really are quite heavy. Um, it's possible to do by yourself, but it's difficult. Uh, so, you know, Kyle did great to get the, as much done by himself as he did. Sometimes when looking back across the video that we get, we realize that it may come across as a little skewed um, as far as us doing more of the work than Kyle or, you know, most of the video is going to be of me or of Kyle and I, but hardly ever any video of just Kyle himself doing the work. And so I realize it may present an incomplete picture of how the labor is actually done. So in actuality, you know, Kyle is out here working all the time. We're only working out here part time. But, you know, since April is taking the video, she's only videoing while her and I are out here working. So there's plenty of times when you know, labor is being done, when work is being done out here that Kyle's doing that we're not videoing it. 
and so that doesn't get captured and so what you see is just the the times that we're down here helping so the video kind of represents that and even if I am up here working, if April's not here, nothing's getting filmed, and so you don't get to see what's happening. April does all the filming and editing and 99% of the work uh, of the videoing and of you know creating the films for this channel. So if she's not there, nothing gets done. Here we are bringing in another piece and getting ready to attach it to the ceiling. You can see how awesome this lift is. It really is so helpful and makes this process so much easier than it would be. I remember doing it in the past before we had a lift and it always involved two or three people trying to hold it up above the head long enough for you to get those first screws in. Oftentimes the first few would pull out because you can't hold it properly. Anyway, this is so much easier. And also I wanted to mention how well those purlins are working. We used those one by four purlins attached to the metal beams to attach the drywall to and they're on 16 inch centers and that worked out perfectly. And this is almost done and magically we transition to the all the mudding being complete and then we're starting the sanding process. Applying the mud and sanding it smooth is a skill set that I've slowly developed over the years. I'm still not great at it but it's taken me a long time to develop the modest skills that I do have. I did talk to Kyle about it and asked him you know if, if he was interested in learning how to do it or participating in this and didn't care to learn that skill, didn't figure he'd ever use it again, and so uh, we decided that I would go ahead and do it since it's easiest and fastest for me to do it while he works on other things. Not doing this overhead work will also give his shoulder more time to heal up. This sander is a piece of equipment that we purchased when we did our home, and it is really a lifesaver. It cuts the work down so much. I mean, I really feel like it cuts probably 75% of the manual labor out of the process. It is so much faster and easier. Right now, I'm just going over the seams and over the little spots over the screw depressions and trying to get everything flat. I'll probably have to come back in with mud one more time to fill in any imperfections and then sand it down again but we do not plan to put texture on the ceiling. We're just gonna leave it a smooth, flat surface. And now I'm almost finished up with the first sanding in here. I've been using scaffolding to work off of. It's so much easier than moving a ladder around all over the place, so that's been working out great. Now I've finished up and I'm just going back over it with some mud and touching up imperfections. This second coat usually goes pretty fast. You're just touching up imperfections. You're not having to recoat everything. So it uses a lot less mud and takes a lot less time. Also, the second sanding is much less labor intensive. So we finished all that up and now Kyle's applying the paint. Well, it's really nice to have the drywall done in here. It took us five weeks to do the drywall in our house. And so it's taken much less time to do the drywall in here since it's just the ceiling. It's a much smaller space. It really feels like we've passed a major milestone, completing the ceiling, which also includes, you know, the insulation and the electrical. So it's really great to have those accomplished. And in our next video, we'll be finishing out the rough plumbing and pouring the concrete floor in the bathroom. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and join us again next time. And here's a quick look at our garden.